Back at E3 2019, Nintendo ended their presentation with a bombshell announcement. Work had begun on developing a sequel to the critically acclaimed Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which had released on the Nintendo Switch in 2017. This announcement followed a minute-long teaser for the game's story, an eerie, cryptic trailer following Link and Zelda, who venture into strange caves presumably somewhere below Hyrule, where they appear to discover a terrifying secret. It's been almost two years since this trailer was released, and since then, we've barely heard anything about the sequel to Breath of the Wild, except for snippets from interviews, and the reassurance from Eiji Aonuma that we'll learn more about the game sometime this year. And just a couple of weeks ago, Nintendo confirmed that they'll be presenting at this year's digital-only E3. The game's by no means confirmed to be shown at this E3, and we might have to wait until the end of the year for more news, but I thought, what better time to recap what we know so far about Breath of the Wild's mysterious sequel. Obviously, the most substantial information about the sequel's story comes from the teaser trailer, even if how it's edited makes it hard to decipher, as the scenes don't appear to be in chronological order. Link and Zelda travel through strange caves, illuminated by the ghostly light of what appear to be luminous stones. The walls of these caves feature intricate carvings, matching those which appear on ruins belonging to the enigmatic Zonai tribe in Breath of the Wild an ancient civilization which vanished without a trace. Not just this, but the walls feature cave paintings, such as this. From the Gerudo symbol on the figure's armor, and the fact that it wields a trident, it's possible that this painting depicts Ganondorf, once the king of the Gerudo. Link and Zelda travel accompanied by a huge buffalo-like pack animal, laden with travel supplies, wood, cooking equipment, and torches. At one point, Zelda's shown to be riding the creature, and at another, both the Princess and the Beast of Burden drink from a river. At a large underground bridge, it's possible that the pair abandon their animal, as we can see it refusing to cross a precarious gap, and it isn't seen again. Presumably sometime after this, Link and Zelda encounter the skeletal figure. It's bent backwards, frozen in what seems like an agonizing scream, held at the chest by a ghostly hand. From the figure, dark tendrils of what appears to be Malice, the essence of Calamity Ganon, pour forth. The trailer then cuts very quickly between a few different shots, which, again, don't appear to be in the correct order. Piecing them together, it seems as if as Zelda and Link approach the figure, it reanimates, its eyes burning with Malice. This causes an eruption of this Malice to hit the ceiling, causing a cave-in where Zelda is caught by Link and Link is in turn caught by the mysterious ghostly hand, the energy of which he appears to absorb into his right hand. The trailer ends on an ominous note. Hyrule Castle begins to rise from the ground. It seems like the sequel's story may explore the origins of Calamity Ganon, Ganondorf, the king of the Gerudo who eventually became the Beast. This corpse-like figure not only has red hair, but he's covered in Gerudo emblems, and wears a jewel on his forehead, like Ganondorf and the Gerudo do. The apparent wound on the figure's chest calls back to Ganondorf's chest wound in Twilight Princess, and, most obviously, the malice pouring out of him, and in his eyes, connects him to Calamity Ganon, meaning that this is almost definitely Ganondorf himself, returning for his first appearance in a main Zelda game since Twilight Princess. The story teaser for the sequel paints a sinister picture. Ganondorf has awoken from some sort of torturous slumber, where he was connected to a strange phantom hand. There are countless theories on what this hand is and what it's doing, but ultimately it's all just speculation at this point. Compared to the bright, cell-shaded, open-air adventure of Breath of the Wild, the sequel's teaser trailer is dark, claustrophobic, and unsettling. The Zelda series is no stranger to having darker sequels, the most obvious being Majora's Mask following Ocarina of Time. This parallel was commented on by Aonuma, who claimed that while Breath of the Wild's sequel won't be related to or inspired by Majora's Mask, it will be a little darker than Breath of the Wild was. 
You know, the game set after the entire kingdom was violently torn to pieces by war machines. That game. One of the most important bits of information we've learned through interviews about the upcoming game is that the Zelda team intend to reuse Breath of the Wild's overworld in its sequel. Aonuma mentioned to Game Informer that one of the reasons they wanted to create this continuation was because he wanted to revisit that same Hyrule, to use that world again while incorporating a new story and new gameplay elements. We don't yet know exactly how they're going to keep Hyrule feeling fresh, especially after most players spent countless hours exploring every nook and cranny in the original. Aonuma has confirmed this again during the Age of Calamity reveal, where he gave a small update on the development of Breath of the Wild's sequel, claiming that in order to make the vast world we enjoyed exploring in the original game even more impressive, the team's working hard on its development. So it seems that, for at least part of the sequel, we'll be exploring the same Hyrule but with new gameplay elements, which make it even more impressive. What these new gameplay elements are, we can only guess. It's very rare for two Zelda games to share an overworld, the closest example being A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds, which share layouts for both Hyrule's and their counterparts, the Dark World and Low Rule, while incorporating new characters, an entirely new story, new dungeons, items, and side quests. It's entirely possible for the Zelda team to reuse Breath of the Wild's Hyrule without it feeling stale, and I'm excited to see what they do to accomplish this. As most people would expect, Breath of the Wild's director, Hidemaru Fujibayashi, is still at the helm of the development of the sequel. Fujibayashi also directed Skyward Sword, but has worked on the Zelda series since the Oracle games, as a director and planner at Capcom for their titles, then as a sub-director and writer on Phantom Hourglass. While we don't know much about the game, one thing we do know is how development began on a sequel for Breath of the Wild. In an interview with Kotaku, Eiji Aonuma clarified that when they released DLC for the original, they realised just how great it was to add more elements to the same world. However, DLC is just additional content, slapped on to the same base game. While thinking of ideas for Breath of the Wild DLC, the team decided that they had too many ideas, and these ideas were too big to work just as DLC leading them to start from scratch with a sequel. Of course, we don't know what these ideas that started out as DLC were, it's a safe guess to assume that one such idea was exploring the origins of the Calamity Ganon, which is one direction that the trailer suggests the game might take. However, some of these ideas were big enough that it meant that making a new game was a better option, so I expect we'll see some pretty substantial changes to the ideas introduced in the original. The team's approach to DLC means that it's incredibly likely that we'll see additional content released for the sequel too. Aonuma mentions that he really likes the idea of having anything coming after the main game, because it means people play the game longer and enjoy it more deeply, and that it's definitely something they'll think about in the future. It's possible that Breath of the Wild's sequel will take inspiration in some ways from Red Dead Redemption 2, which apparently has been played a lot by younger members of the development team, similar to how Breath of the Wild's director, Fujibayashi, played Skyrim while working on that game. In interviews, Aonuma has also touched on the idea of a playable Princess Zelda, or a multiplayer feature. On the topic of a co-op feature with Link and Zelda, Aonuma mentions that you see the pair together a lot in Breath of the Wild, and that he thinks that the idea of co-op is very interesting. In a separate interview, when asked if Zelda might be playable, Aonuma responded by asking why people think this might happen, and that he can't reveal anything right now. It's been suggested a lot that a possible reason for Zelda's new short haircut is so that her model more closely matches Link's, making it easier to copy animations across in the case that she's playable in the sequel, though so far there's nothing to confirm this. And finally, like I mentioned earlier, Eiji Aonuma confirmed during the Skyward Sword HD announcement that, yes, we'll finally learn more about Breath of the Wild's sequel this year. With Nintendo appearing at the digital E3 this June, it's entirely possible that this is when we'll get to see another trailer or some gameplay, perhaps even a name for the game, but this isn't confirmed. 
Breath of the Wild is one of the best games I've ever played. It's innovative, funny, and I can't wait to see how Nintendo build on its foundations in the sequel when we see more later this year. I'll be sure to cover any updates on the game here on the channel, so subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and I'll see you next time.